Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show number 30, and I am pumped that you're here today because today we have on Hollywood screenwriter, multi-store owner, Hank Nelkin. And I mean, he shares his story of how he got into this business, how it was a slow start for him, and how he kind of wiggled his way up to profitability and beyond. And it's an awesome story filled with uh, just a ton of practical tips and wisdom. I know you're going to get a ton out of it. And he's just a good dude too. So you're really, really going to enjoy this. I can't wait for you uh, to listen to it. I already took away some really cool stuff. And be sure to stick around to the very end because at the end, I'll give my big takeaway from this and uh, and encourage you to find a takeaway to take take away. Uh, from this one too. Uh, but before we get there, a couple of things that I wanted to do is number one, hey, welcome to all of you who are here for the first time, either on YouTube, on the podcast. Um, if you've joined on the website, the community over there, man, welcome to you. And man, we really, really believe that working together and helping each other out is going to lead to success, uh, higher success, quicker success, better success for all of us, and it'll make it a lot more fun. So that's why we're doing what we're doing here. We wanna help you find financial independence through laundromat ownership. And one of the big ways that people are connecting right now is on our forums. And there's a lot of activity this week on the forums. Very cool to see. Um, so I want to take a second to welcome all of you who are new. Um, and, it's, and in particular, uh, John Cooper, who, hey, welcome, man. I'm super pumped. He's a WaveMax franchisee and he came and joined us and he introduced himself himself on the introductions forum. Um, the forums, by the way, laundromatresource.com slash forums. We have a few different forums there you can post on, but the introduction forums is a place for you to go introduce yourself and go meet some other owners and start networking so you can find success faster. So if you haven't done that yet, head over there, introduce yourself, let people know where you're at on your journey with laundromats. Um, so welcome to John. Uh, also happening over there, a really, really cool thread in the financing th uh, forum is <clears throat> talking about ROBS, which is, if you're not familiar with ROBS, it's uh, like roll over business something. I don't know. <laughs> but essentially what it is, is using retirement funds to purchase a small business. And that is an awesome way for... Uh, some people to get into this business and a lot of people are doing it. So if you're interested in that or something like it, head over to the financing forum and jump in on that conversation. There's a lot of buzz happening on that forum thread right now. So check that out. And the other one I wanted to highlight is Josh in the laundromats forums posted about marketing and he uh, bought a laundromat, did all the basic marketing stuff, but now he's interested in and leveling up his marketing. And so taking that to the next level, he wants to put together a group of people who want to talk about intermediate and advanced marketing techniques. And I knew some of you guys would really be interested in that. And some of you guys probably have a lot of really good things to add to that. Um, ways that you've done marketing that you've seen really work in, in this business. So if that's something that interests you, head over to the forums, click on the laundromats forums and find Josh's thread on marketing. I think the title is just marketing. And, uh, it, you know, let Josh know that you are interested in that. I'm interested in that. I'm super pumped about that. Our COO of Laundromat Resource Marketing, John, he is super interested in that. We're going to be participating. So we want you to join us. So head over to that forum. Let us know that you're interested. Let Josh know you're interested. We'll put something together and that'll be awesome for all of us, I think. So, hey, I, th that was I, so cool to see this week, all the action happening on the forums over there. And again, that's free, free forums, always free, will always be free, a place for you to connect, get questions answered and more. Um, one final thing that uh, I just, I wanted to actually ask your help on something and uh, I get, we have a buyer's email list. You can sign up on the website, um, right there on the homepage, there's a button for it. And I literally have multi, multi hundreds of people, maybe over a thousand people by now who are on that buyer's email list. And one thing that's so important to me is helping connect 
buyers and sellers with great brokers to work with. I really believe that working with great brokers is a huge, huge deal um, because I, I say this all the time, but if you get in this business correctly, then the sky's the limit for you. If you get into it poorly, it can be really, really hard to dig your, your way out. And I'm speaking from experience here. So um, I really want to connect people with that. But the demand is so overwhelming that I can't keep up anymore. I can't keep cold calling and emailing uh, brokers and trying to vet them. So I thought I'd reach out to you guys and see, hey, if you know a good broker or a good agent, maybe that you've worked with, who deals in laundromats, who's knowledgeable, who has a lot of integrity, who's honest, Send me an email introduction and uh, I would love to add them to the network so that I can help connect them with buyers and sellers. Um, and my email is jordan at laundromatresource.com, J-O-R-D-A-N at laundromatresource.com. And my contact information is on the website too. Uh, I'll put it all down in the description or the link uh, or, or the uh, show notes. So Hey, if you could do that, that would be awesome. And again, all over the United States, Canada and beyond, um, looking for good, good brokers or agents. So connect them up with me. That'd be helpful for me and for everyone else listening. So thank you guys for that. Without further ado, let's get into it with Hank because he is bringing it today and you're going to love it. In today's world, if your laundromat is not online, you're losing business. Customers increasingly decide who to trust with their laundry by the quality of your web presence. But creating a professional logo and website that instills trust in potential customers and can be found on page one of Google can be difficult to create on your own and expensive to purchase through a traditional marketing company. As part of our mission to help laundromat owners succeed and find financial freedom through laundromat ownership, we are launching our done for you marketing service tailored specifically for laundromats. After ranking number one on Google with our own laundromat website and consulting with many others to help them do the same, we guarantee that we can build you a professional website that ranks on page one of Google within six months. Our joint expertise in the laundry industry and over 15 combined years in website design and online marketing allow us to offer affordable, transparent pricing for a high quality web presence for your laundromats. You invest so much into providing your customers a quality laundry experience. Don't let anyone miss out on what you have to offer simply because they can't find you online. Let Laundromat Resource Marketing take care of your online presence so you can take care of your customers. Visit laundromatresource.com slash get online today for more information. That's laundromatresource.com slash get online or click on the link in the description. All right, Hank, how's it going, man? How you doing? Great, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm super excited to hear about you and your story and what you got going on. You have like a unique uh, thing you're doing with your laundromat, and I, I'm excited to hear about it. But before yeah. we get into it, tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, um, I am uh, originally from the South, <clears throat> from uh, Mississippi and Texas, and then I... Um, <clears throat> came out to LA to go to USC film school and um, I'd always want to make movies and, and be a filmmaker. So I came out uh, and went to film school and then um, started uh, writing uh, and uh, I've been a screenwriter actually ever since. So professional screenwriter for 20 plus years. And um, uh, anything, both, anything that we would recognize uh, depending on your taste in, in movies. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a movie called Saving Silverman, which oh, was yeah. a com silly comedy with uh, Jack Black and uh, Jason Biggs and all that. And then yeah. um, a, a family comedy called Are We Done Yet, which was with Ice Cube, which was a sequel to Are We There Yet. Um, and then a movie called Mom's Boy, which um, not a lot of people saw, it, but it was uh, Warner Brothers made it, but it just didn't get for some reason out there. But uh uh, Diane Keaton was in it, Jeff Daniels, Anna Ferris. It was an amazing cast. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a cool experience. Man, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been writing, you know, I mean, it's been my job, my day job for, you know, years, right? You know, writing, rewriting, and, uh, to, you know, adapted books. I've done animation. So it's been, it's been a lot. I mean, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. That's so cool. And I think you're kind of living, well, we haven't mentioned this yet, but where, where do you live? Where are you from? Like where I live now? Yeah, yeah. Sherman Oaks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you're right. You're right there in the thick of it with, uh, with all the movie stuff and everything going on. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah, I, you know, I always wanted to be in LA, you know, cause it's where everything is. Although now things are moving to other places, yeah. but uh, <laughs> still the hub of everything. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's so keep going. Uh, who I am. Okay. So, uh, so I've been doing that for forever and, um, just really have always been, you know, creative and enjoyed that process. And, um, and then about, you know, five or so years ago, I got into, I started getting into real estate actually. Um, and I started getting into commercial real estate. I've still been writing, um, but I kind of started to do that on the side and I was getting interested in it and enjoying it. Um, apartment buildings and, and that sort of thing, uh, you know, as investments and, and really under, starting to understand. And we'll get back to this, but the, the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, there's, I've read a ton of books and your, your, uh, list is great. And I've read a bunch of them on your list. I got, got some from your list also. Nice. Um, but all those books are great resources. And, uh, it, it just, because I'd been in the creative side of it for so long, you know, I hadn't really thought about the financial stuff that much. I mean, I'd been, I had a, you know, pension plan that I was investing in, but I wasn't, you know, thinking about it too much. Um, so once I started getting into real estate, I started started to understand, oh, building wealth, you know, this is how you do it. Um, you know, it's not just about your income. And so I started getting really kind of fascinated with spreadsheets and how it looked on paper and how we value, you know, department building, the, the value was based on the revenue, right? You know, and, and if you did some improvements, then the revenue went up and, and the value went up exponentially uh, and leverage, you know, so... So I got my uh, license, my agent, uh, my real estate license um, during that time. And when I, so originally, so when I got it, I was super excited. It's like when you get driver's license, it's like, ooh, hey, I'm an agent now. Yeah. So I was like going around telling everybody, I'm an agent, if you got anything, you know. And I was at this uh, restaurant that I go to all the time with my like, kids where I would drop home at school. And I knew the, the owner, just because I've been there so many times every morning, and I told him that, and he goes, "Oh, well, I, got a, I got a guy over here who's um, who's selling his uh, who, who wants to sell this dry cleaner, dry cleaner business." And I'm like, hmm, "Okay, I don't, you know, uh, I don't know anything about that, but maybe I could help him." Um, I ended up calling a friend of mine who's a wealth manager, and I was trying to broker some kind of deal between him. I said, "Do you have any clients who want to buy a dry cleaner?" He said, "No." So that didn't go anywhere, and I just kind of like left it and went back to my normal life. And about two months later, my buddy called and he goes, didn't you, didn't you call me? Didn't you uh, say something about a, a dry cleaner? I, I, you know, no, he said, didn't you, didn't you ask me something about a laundromat? I said, no, I was dry cleaner. He goes, well, I got, I got something about a laundromat. I got a guy who wants to buy a laundromat. <laughs> <I'm lying. sighs> and I said, okay. I mean, I just, was, I mean, I'm, in my life, I pretty much kind of try to say yes to things and go forward to see what. Yes. 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 You know? Yeah. yeah. Because you never know. You just open the door and see. And, you know, so he said, yes, yeah, lawyer in Beverly Hills. He really wants to, uh, you know, buy laundromats. And I said, okay, I'll, let's have lunch. So I had lunch with him. And he was like, yeah, I'm a lawyer. And I'm just, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. And I want to, I, I researched this. And laundromats are the best, you know, passive income. And I just want to buy them and, and get out of here. I said, all right, well, let me, I'll help you. I don't know. I'll, I'll investigate, see what I can do. So I started calling around and uh, I ended up uh, with the, every a number of people told me the guy you want to talk to is David Dan. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know David, David. I know David. Yeah. 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 Of course. So I called David, just cold call him. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's great. Well, I, I've got, I've got stuff to show you. <laughs> so I took my, this lawyer, you know, guy out and we looked at a couple of laundromats that, um, that David had for sale and I started getting into it. Then I started researching it. And uh, I started looking at the numbers and looking at the business. And I started to like it. So then I said to the guy, you know, hey, you know, maybe we could partner up. And maybe we'll go in together. I said, okay, maybe. And so, so David had this one location that was uh, a store that had been in laundromat for 25 years in a little strip mall. Uh, but it had been closed for about a year, year and a half. And everything in it was, all the equipment was old and had to be replaced. So it was kind of like opening a brand new store. But mm-hmm. you know, with all the plumbing and everything. And people knew it had been a laundromat. And I was really interested in that. I liked the idea of building something from scratch kind of, and learning from the beginning. So anyway, I said, I think this is a really good deal. You want to go in together? And he said, mm, I think I'm out. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mind. I don't know. So I said, okay. So I said, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so that, I just did it. I decided to do it and I bought it. And I, I actually didn't buy it because it was nothing to buy. But I um, 
you know, leased the space, got a loan, bought all the equipment, built it, did a build out, and opened the store uh, about three years ago. So that long story to get to laundromat. It was a very circuitous uh, route. Yeah. Well, I found that a lot of people take that kind of route to get into laundromats, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is out of math, because it's not unless it's in your family or something. It's it's you know it's an odd one to find. You know? Totally. Yeah. But. Yeah. I don't know about you, but every time I tell somebody almost, they're like, that's random. That's really weird. Well, what's funny about, and me too, is, you know, every time I say this, they go, oh my God, you got to go write a script about that. You know, you got to yeah. write a movie or a show about one of And truthfully, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot there too. Oh my gosh. I have thought about writing <laughs> multiple movie scripts about yeah. it. Yeah. The weird things that you couldn't even make up you okay. know, that happened in my laundromat. It's an interesting world, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Well, that is a that's a very interesting way to get into the business. I'm curious about that first deal. Okay, so you had a broker who brought you and showed you a location that was not no longer operational. Is that right? It was it had been closed. the The owner of the strip mall had run and owned the laundromat for 20 years. Okay, um, and I, they apparently done good business over the years, but it, you know for whatever reason uh, they just they got busy. They also had a restaurant in the strip mall. Mm-hmm. So they just got busy with the restaurant and, and just didn't want to do the laundromat anymore. And kind of just one day just closed the doors. And so um, all the equipment that was there was, you know, 20 plus years old. Right. You know, it really were. I mean, it just kind of run down and then they just decided to close it up. So um, it was just, you know, there was a shell with plumbing and everything ready to go, but nothing right. inside, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, man, the, the infamous free laundromat right yeah. there. Well, that's what I also liked about it. I like the idea of not buying someone else's business. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was, especially the laundry, you know, it, it, it's, you never, you don't know what they're doing. And I never heard you talking to different people in this podcast about it. It's, I mean, there obviously there's ways to check and try to make sure their books are right, but it's, especially with the cash business, it's, it's hard to really know what their numbers are. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to take over someone's business a, I, you know, the, I don't know what their customer service was. I didn't know what their numbers really were, their machines. I just didn't want to take, the, you know, take over their problems. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming the, the broker then sold you equipment because I'm trying to figure out how else they would make money off of yes. introducing you. So I'm assuming they sold you equipment from there. Yes. So he was, a, he's also a distributor for content. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sold, sold the equipment. Yeah. Good. Okay. So you got new equipment in there and you did a build out. Um, did you personally pay for the build out or did you get funding for it or how did that all work out? Basically the, uh, the, uh, the, the capital investment really was a down payment on the machines and then the build out. So I, okay. that, that came out of my pocket, the, you know, and then the loan was for the equipment. So, I mean, it was about, I'd say 20% of the total project, you know, was out of my pocket and the rest right. was, was loan for the equipment. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the build out was, was the biggest, you know, kind of hard cost. Because mm-hmm. um, it was just, it was, I mean, we had to, you know, put everything in. Redo everything. Yeah, totally. Well, that's, I mean, that's a pretty typical scenario that I see is, you know, people don't reinvest back into their businesses and they end up with the, you know, the so-called zombie laundromat where there's really not anything to sell anymore. Even, you know, people try to squeeze out a little bit, you know, selling a customer base or the infrastructure, but there's really not a whole lot of value left in it because they haven't reinvested in it. So, yeah. Right, there's just some, some equipment or whatever, and that's usually not worth much at that point. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you got in. How long was that process from like when you first, you know, secured that location to when you were able to open back up? Um, it was, uh, it was about six months, you know. Um, I mean, it's always a little bit longer than, you know, expected, but around six months from when we, you know, signed the lease, um, got the loan, got all the numbers in place, started the build out. We opened in uh, April 2018. I think that's right. Um, and so it's, it started, the process started basically in like the fall of 2017. Okay. No. Okay. And then did you, uh, did you negotiate the lease or did the broker do it for you? He had already negotiated the lease, actually. Okay. So, and it was it was really a good lease. It was long term, and the you know price was really reasonable. So, good, good man, because you know those leases they can make you or break you. 
Yeah. Well, that was a good one. And also, and, and the key too is the length because you want to, I mean, especially if you're spending money in there, like I, I did to build it out, you know, that's his property ultimately. Right. So, um, you know, I want to make sure there's 20 plus years of, of lease in there. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So you took you about six months, give or take a little bit to open up. You open up finally, you have this laundromat that kind of randomly, you know, for you were trying to get it for a client and you ended up getting it yourself. So you, you throw open the doors. What was that experience like? I mean, it was so interesting because it, it also, for me, it was just so different than what I, what I've been doing for 20 years, <clears throat> you know, when you write a, you know, writing a movie, it's like, you know, it's all about coming up with a concept and going out, pitching it to executives. And then they say, well, they like it or they don't, and they buy it, or they don't, if they buy it, you write it, and then they write it, and then either they make it or they don't. And there's a lot of things that are out of your control and, 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 and you just kind of put it into the world and then, you know, and you don't know what's going to happen. This is, you know, this for me was so different because there's a lot of control, you know, there's a lot of levers I can pull and, um, you know, it's a physical place. I can advertise it. I can lower prices. You know, there's ways to get people to come in and, and build it. Um, so the control, I, I really liked a lot. When we opened, um, <laughs> we had, um, we could do a soft open where we just open the doors, you know, without uh, having any marketing or anything, just to let people come in and start to debug the, you know, equipment and see how everything was working. So we did that for, I don't know, two or three or four weeks. And then we decided to have a grand opening. Um, number one, it was in the summer. Which I don't, which is the worst time for laundromats anyway. Yeah, and in LA it's super hot. So we uh, we did a grand opening in <laughs> July, August, and nobody showed up. It was just, it was like then then just nobody. Um, but my uh, so that was an interesting lesson too in in, in uh, something. Do you uh, think it was because it was so? This is not true everywhere, but at least here in California, I think in a lot of places, but not everywhere, summer is the slowest season for laundromats and business typically is down. So that's what he's referring to. Um, but do you think it's because of that and the weather or what do you think the reason was? Do you have an idea? I think, that, I think, yeah, big part of it was, it was 110 degrees, you know, and yeah, so that's, that's really don't do <laughs> that opening, you know, at 110 degrees. And I, you know, I think, um, I just don't think we had enough uh, 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 presence in the community. I don't. I just we've done some marketing, we've sent out some flyers, but I just don't think people knew we were really there yet. You know, yeah. and, and what really happened was, as you know, the lesson was. I mean, I thought, oh, okay, we're going to open and have a great opening, and then people, are, a bunch of people are going to come, and then it's going to sort of. But really, what happened was it was much more of a slow, gradual build, hmm. um, and so uh, you know, it took. It really took twelve to eighteen months to real. I mean, we were. Six months in was doing well, but 12 to 18 months to really start hitting projected numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just was a grow. Every month we would just see it increasing and slowly increasing, slowly increasing, you know, word of mouth, people, you know, return customers and, and, and they just built. Um, but it, it took, it, it was not a, 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 an explosive, you know, thing. It was a gradual thing. Was that, did that make you panic? Like when that happened or how did you feel when it was like, Oh man, we're not hitting projected numbers and we're six yeah. months in or we're a year in, you know? Well, you know, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know if we ever would. I mean, I, it was the first one I've done and, you know, I wasn't sure these projected numbers were real, you know? And so I thought, God, if we can just get, if the projected numbers were really good. And if we did less than that, it would be, it would be a fine, you know? So I thought, I don't know if we're ever going to hit those, but we'll hopefully we'll hit the other ones to break even and go above, you know? Right. And it was scary. It was scary because, you know, it starts off and you're, you know, 20% of where you want to be. And then you're 25 and then you're 30 and then you're 40 and then you're half, you know, and like, okay, that's better, but still half. Of where yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's scary, but then it builds, it builds. And then you start, once it got to 60, 70, I'm like, Oh, this is, it's, it's going to happen. You know, and then it went to 80, 90, and then it hit, um, it hit hundred percent. It hit the numbers that we had projected it to hit the really good numbers in, um, January, February, March of this year. So basically like three years in, it really hit the really good numbers. And then COVID hit the next month, April, <laughs> it was like, we were doing our best and done. And then April hit, and then it dropped 25%, but then it's come back since. Then. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that uh, that was a punch in the gut for a lot of people. Not just yeah. obviously not just in our industry, but well, I mean, the thing is, we were able to be open, and uh, so many businesses most weren't. So I was felt lucky that we could remain open. Yeah, and do business. So you know, and you know, luckily the. Uh, you know, the bank, the lender, you know, gave us a deferment on the loan during some of that time. So that really helped. Yeah, that's nice. That that definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Well, you own more than one, right? Yes. So how did you pick up that next one? So that one um, in, uh, I guess, about a year ago now, um, uh, I got a call from... Uh, David Dang, <laughs> who, uh, and so David's son, Madison, uh, has been my manager. Uh, so he really has been a key part of the original store, opening it, running it. And because he has a lot of knowledge and his dad has a lot of knowledge and his mom, they're, they're all in the business and they all have own laundromats and they do distri- you know, distribution. So they're kind of in my gurus. Um, so they, um, so they, Madison and, 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 and David called and said, Hey, we've got this store. Um, it, it, that uh, basically the owner defaulted on everything. The bank needs someone to come in and take over. Um, there's a big discount on, you know, on what was owed on the equipment. It's a really great store. It's a great location, really busy area. Um, so I was like, great. I want to check, you know, check it out. And it had been closed just like my the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was in much better shape um, in terms of the inside, you know, interior and everything. So I went and looked at it and I'm like, great, let's do it. I was just ready to go because it, it seemed like an opportunity. You know, like I said, I like to, you know, I like to say yes to stuff if I can, if it makes sense and just go for it. And um, so it was a quick one because it was like, you know, you got to do this now. The landlord like had other people who wanted the space to do it. Again, the lease had been negotiated. Um, so it all looked good. And uh, and it was the same lender I had from the original, you know, store. So um they were great. And this is Eastern funding. I think you uh-huh. talked. Um, and they've been great. And they were, and, and I was, you know, they, we were helping each other on this one because they really needed someone to take, you know, to take this loan because it was just sitting there. Um, so uh, I did. So basically, I did, again, I didn't buy the store. Um, and in fact, <laughs> that, that had to be proven to the uh, DWP because when I took over the store, there was like a $25,000 bill from the department of water power Ooh. previous owner who had like kind of skipped town or whatever he did so i said well i don't owe that you know that's that's the previous owner and they said no you do own that you bought the business and then i said no i didn't buy the business and that was a really you know that that was a month we couldn't turn the power on for a month because they kept saying that you know i owed them this money finally we had, showed enough documentation that they understood it was not a um I didn't purchase the business. So yeah. they released me from that and then we got the power. Holy cow, man. I have, well, I probably shouldn't bash the department of water and power, but man, I've, I've had my tussles with them also. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just a bureaucracy, you know, and it just yeah. took, it was just took a month to get to the right person and convince, you know, so, but we did. And, and during that time we were doing some build out work anyway. Um, so we did, you know, more than cosmetic, but not nearly as much as we did the first one. It was ceiling work and lighting and, you know, really spiffed it up. But um, uh, so that took that time anyway. Yeah. It kind of worked out. By the time that was done, we got the power on and water. And, you know, yeah, that, I mean, that's fun. good. Kind yeah, so that opened in April. So basically that was much, that was quicker because it was like December, you know, I got the call about it and we were open in April. Oh, yeah, that's... That's definitely quicker. So what's that been like now having two? Did was it a big jump or was it pretty much the same or well it um you know it's really like having two kids. I've got two kids and it's like the first one is like the big one, right? That one's like, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know anything about this. The second one's like, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's it's, yeah. it's 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 so I'm just less stressed about it. I'm less, you know, the same thing's happening, you know, where you know, we opened the doors. Of course, we opened in April, right when COVID hit. Yeah. I mean, there's a huge school across the street from this store, which tons of business came in from that. The, the school closed. I mean, it was like, so it was even slower to start than the original one. But I knew 
based on my experience, it was going to happen and, and come. So I wasn't as worried. I think, um, so yeah, I had infrastructure. Uh, my Madison, you know, manager managed the store as well. So we had our thing going in our rhythm. Um, I think the hardest part has been um, staff. Because if the first store it took, you know, a good period of time to get the right people, mm-hmm. and now they're amazing. And the same with this new store, it kind of took... We just kind of made it work the last couple of months. So it's taken about, you know, six months to get the right people. We went through some different people that didn't work out so well. And now we've got a good team. So I think that was the that's, that was the hard part. Yeah. And I think your staff can make or break your business, right? Like if you have bad staff, they're not reliable or customers don't like them or they don't, they refuse to clean or they're not good at it or whatever. Like, man, your business is going to be hurting. Uh, all the above. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is key uh, that they, because I mean, you know, if they don't open in the morning, but then <laughs> you know, yeah. people show up with their laundry and then they never come back. It's like, well, the doors closed, you know? Yeah. I mean, and if they're rude, they don't come back, you know, and if they don't clean, they don't come back. Yeah. So it's, it's finding them. Right. And, you know, it's the right temperament too, because, you know, everyone has their, whatever their, their philosophy is about their place and, you know, how they want their people to act and be in terms of like friendliness in terms of, you know, returns or credits or, you know, money and how they deal with that. Um, so finding the people that are on the same page, you know, as, as us, uh, but we, we have it now in both stores. So I'm, I'm, that's been, that's a huge relief. You know, that's a big load. Off. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Was it, was it mostly trial and error just like trying to find the right people or did you, find something that kind of helps you narrow that down at all or, or no? It was trial and error. I mean, yeah. really, yeah. I mean, it was like, yeah, we just, you know, you just go, you know, hire people that you think are good and then you see what happens. And then, then you know, pretty soon you can tell. Um, and then it's also, they have to kind of work together, even though they're not always on the same ship, but they leave work for each other, you know, and if one's leaving something dirty, the other one's upset. So they have to work together too. So it's, a, it's, you know, it's like casting, actually. I mean, you know, it's like, you, you know, you want to cast the right person in the right role, but you also have to, have to get the chemistry with the rest of the ensemble. Yes. So, yeah. Bringing it all together, it all together. Hollywood style. Yeah. Well, it all, you know, it's like, I found a lot of similarities and a lot of commonalities, actually, because you are, it's a production. You're building something that has to run and work. And, um, and, and certainly with the marketing and sales and stuff, that's been, for me, has been a lot of fun being having the creative looking for how to market in taglines and posters and that kind of stuff. Yeah. How, what, what kind of marketing are you doing? I mean, mostly, you know, it's been, um, Instagram and Facebook, you know, trying to do free, you know, kind of as much free social media marketing as I can. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's, you know, Google and Yelp, uh, you know, making sure those sites are up to date and everything's, um, looking good on that. Um, you know, the website, trying to drive traffic to the website. Um, and then we've done, so there's basically, you know, there's really two businesses here as you've been talking to people about the pickup and delivery in Washington fold mm-hmm. versus the self-service. I mean, there really are two different businesses. So advertising for the self-service is all local, you know? And so we've done, um, you know, these mailers, the direct marketing mailers that went out in the neighborhood and we had, we'd say, come bring this in and you get, you know, $5 toward your next wash plus a little bag of soap. And that's brought in a lot of people, you know, in the neighborhood for the self-service. Um, and then it's word of mouth, you know, for, for that. Um, and good signage, you know, uh, on a big, you know, nice streets and that make sure people can see it. But then there's the marketing for the pickup and delivery and the washable, which is totally separate. And it's a much wider area in LA, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to do the whole Valley, um, San Fernando Valley. So it's, it's, uh, and marketing to di- different demographics. So it's about, it's, that's been trial and error too. How do I reach them? you know, which ads work the best, get the most clicks. You know, I've, I've tried a bunch of different ads and I've, I do the same, um, you know, I'll pay 25 bucks to let's say Instagram. So it'll run five days. I'll spend $5 a day and that's my template. And then I'll see how many clicks each one gets, you know, and you can see some get, you know, 25 clicks, a dollar a click, some get five, some get more. Right. So right. it kind of helps me see what's, what people are engaging with. Yeah, you're running some good testing there for those ads and stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I wanted to hear a little bit about your pick and delivery business too. How did you get into that and how's that going? And tell me yeah. a little bit about it. Um, well, so, you know, the 
the wash and fold is, is the beginning of it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I knew I wanted to do, to do that, um, you know, as soon as we open, you know, both stores, cause it's just, it's such a, it's just such a great revenue stream and it's, you know, the profit margin is really high and you already have the infrastructure. You kept someone there working at the machines, you have everything there. You may as well, you know, pick up, uh, do, do the wash and fold. So when we started with that, staff got really good at it. You know, we started building a customer base for just drop off service. Um, and then, uh, and then in May with COVID hit, you know, I saw the numbers drop, you know, 25%. And I thought, okay, this is time to pick up delivery. I mean, because people, it's, everyone's doing, you know, that's what everyone's getting every service now. And um, so I just kind of cobbled together something and, and got it going. I just wanted to get it started. So it was just, um, it was, I had a guy who was, who was already kind of working in the store and he was, he was dry. He would drive and pick stuff up. Um, I basically just did marketing on like, you know, social media just started that way. Also reached out to customers we already had, emailed them and sent out, you know, campaign with that. Um, and uh, it was just really simple. Just if we got an order, you know, we come through the website. Um, I set up a square, real basic uh, booking uh, site so you could book a time. And then um, if the order came in, he would get a text. He'd go pick it up, bring it to the store. They'd do it. You'd take it back. Um, so I was looking, I put, I was looking back at the numbers. So in May we started, we did seven orders. Um, and so, and it was like, you know, it was great because it was a way to just try it out, see how it worked, um, and see if people were you know happy with it. Uh, then in June we did 15 orders. Uh, so we doubled in June. Uh, it's, you know, we had started having some return customers, some new customers. July and August, which was the summer anyway, dropped to like nine or eight or nine for both months. So kind of went down a little bit, but then September, October, November have gone to from 14 to 26 to 30. Um, so that's what I felt like we were finally getting our groove in terms mm-hmm. of like really getting the word out, a lot of repeat customers um, and, uh, and a lot of new customers starting to come in. And that's, look, that's third, that's one a day we're hitting this month. I mean, you've had guys on and they're doing 50 a day. So we're just at the beginning of this. But what I've done is um, I bought curbside. I know you've had those guys on. Yeah. And so that's my next thing. So we're in process on that right now. Um, and Real quick that, too, yeah. just you know, for anybody listening, that uh, I'll link to Matt Simmons' interview uh, in the show notes or if you're on YouTube in the descriptions. Uh, that is one of the most popular episodes out there. Uh, right. Matt Simmons with, with Curbside Laundry. So... Check that one out. I mean, I, I believe I've been dealing with Ken there. It's been great. Um, Ken's but awesome. They're, they're, the, yeah, those, uh, and I, they had a webinar. Maybe that's the same thing you're talking about. But man, it was, uh, I, it was so, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> it was a soul. And um, I called him that day. I'm like, let's do this. And I've been looking at it. I knew about it anyway for the last couple of years. But, you know, it's an investment. And um, and already had kind of the square machine. And I have the way we do things. So it's a big, you know, change. But I felt like, okay, we're growing this thing and that's the way to scale it. Because also, the way I was doing it so mom and pop, it's like, you know, the way the texts come in and the communication and the orders is very like, we're able to do 30 a month for sure, but to do 60, 80, 100, 20, it's, we're not going to be able. So, um, so actually, so right now, uh, actually at 11 o'clock, I'm doing the curbside training on, online, like for the software stuff. Um, the equipment's all coming in. Um, I built out cabinets in both stores to hold the clothes because we, you know, we're running out of room in the stores. And these laundromats typically don't have a lot of storage space. Right. Yeah. So we're like building shelves in the back, trying to like, you know, squeeze back. So we built um, two big cabinets uh, in both a big cabinet in each store to hold, and so we can organize on shelves and where everything's going to go. Um, and then I think with this, with the new software, we'll be able to. The really, the, I mean, all of it's important, but it's the website and the booking for me too, because my website, I created myself, which is fine, but it just can't do very much. And the booking site, all it can do is book a time. It can't, I really, that. And with their website, you can do all your, you know, what kind of soap do you want? I mean, all the scheduling of really specific detailed stuff. Um, you know, you can pay online and all that stuff, which it's just much more advanced. Um, 
So, uh, and the, the website's more, is better designed to funnel in, you know, your customer comes in, he looks, they look at it and they end up scheduling a, a pickup. So uh, I'm excited about all that. I'm hoping that that will help me scale in the next six months to a year. Yeah, huge. Uh, so you have you haven't really been operating with the software up until now, is that? I, no, no, not even now yet. I mean, we're gonna. I, I yeah. don't have. It's, I think. I mean, hopefully by like December first, maybe we'll be kind of running running it. Um, yeah. But, you know, right now I'm just it's just Square and kind of the way we've been doing. It. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna make things so much easier for you. I think. Uh, and for the customer too to to make those orders, so I think you'll be you'll be pretty excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Cool. Well, man, that's that's awesome. I I love that you. I mean, I I kind of love your philosophy of just like let's say yes and then let's figure it out. And you kind of did that with you know becoming an agent and then you know yeah, I'll try to sell your dry cleaner, you know, yeah, I'll try to help your guy find a laundromat to buy. Okay. You're not going to buy it. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy it. It sounds good to me. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll take another one. Okay. I'll do, you know, pick up and delivery. But I, like, I love that because I do think good things happen when you say yes, even when bad things happen when you say yes. I, I, I agree. I think it's, you know, I, and you know, I learned this from Hollywood because it's you know it's, it's such a tough business, and and there's so much rejection, you know, and and so, but you you know, and it's it's hard, and it's, it's barrier to entry is really challenging, you know, but you know, you go for it. You do. You you got to put your stuff out there. You got to. It's like you want to have. I mean, you want to calculate. You know, I'm not. I'm not advocating like you know, just go out and buy the first thing you see and spend all your money and hope for the best. You do all your homework, but you got to pull the trigger on something. And if it's not this deal, look for the next one. But I, if you don't pull the trigger, you just, you don't do anything. And I think that's where the rich dad, poor dad, and that, you know, five, so years ago, looking at this wealth building and understanding, like, I got to pull the trigger on some things because it's the building of that, that five, 10, 20 years from now, suddenly you've got multiple businesses, you paid down the, you know, you got equity in them, the revenue's up, the value's up, you can sell them, you can, you know, run them. I can buy real estate with money, you know, just continue that process. So you got to get in. Yeah, that that's exactly how you build wealth, right? You take that first step and that's the hardest one. I mean, it really is the hardest one because I, I mean, I, I talk to coaching clients all the time who, you know, who are like, I've been doing this, you know, I've been looking into laundromats for years or decades or whatever. And I've never taken that step because that first step is so scary. You know, there's like you mentioned before, like, you don't know how it's supposed to perform. Like you don't know how it's going to go. You just kind of have to take that step and maybe it flops completely and you lose everything you work so hard for. That's scary. Right. But maybe it doesn't. And, and I like what you said that, you know, with the laundromats, as opposed to screenwriting in particular, you said, you know, you have some element of control you have the ability to kind of control that. Yeah, I, I, in a way, I, I feel like it's it's less risky to do this than because um, because you can. I, I guess I felt like I'm not going to fail because I'm going to make it work. Like no matter what, I'm, it's a laundromat. It's not you know I'm not you know I'm not Elon Musk sending a rocket to, to Mars. This right. is these are yet it's washing your clothes yeah. Huh? You're yes. not feeling about sending a rocket to Mars yet. That's right. When yeah. he calls and wants to be part of it, I'll say yes. I'm done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, so these are like you wash your clothes. People do it. There's a zillion of them. It's a billion dollar business, and so you can make it work. You know, and if it's, it's so, you learn on the fly, and you learn what works and doesn't. But you just got to put in the time and effort to make sure it works. You know, what, I mean, I don't want to lose my investment and all that, my time. So. I knew that no matter what, I, I mean, unless something catastrophic, I guess, happens. But, you know, that that you just keep working harder and harder, marketing, whatever you can do to get people to come in. And once you have enough people in, then you, you've got a business, you know, and then you can grow it or not, but at least you're not losing money. You know, that's... So. Yeah. I do feel like there's a lot of control. Yeah. Awesome philosophy. I'm a big fan of that. Um, you know, I know some people take a little more conservative approach, but I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So kudos from me to you. <laughs> uh, hey, I wanted to ask you too. Uh, so we, we kind of got connected just on Instagram 
uh, I think randomly, I think. Yeah. Uh, and your, your Instagram really stood out to me because your laundromat, I don't know if both of them or just one of them is half price laundromat, right? Yeah. That's the whole brand. Yeah. Yeah. The brand. So I, I mean, I would love to hear about that concept and how you came up with that and, and what that looks like, what that means and how that's yeah. been working out. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, again, I had no idea what I was doing when I started, but I, um, with that first store, um, I really wanted, once I found out that there were, you could have a card store and not a coin store, I really wanted a card store because uh, th- that's the one thing that was kind of always a turn thing, a turn off to me thinking about laundry. It's like collecting those coin buckets of coins and how do you weigh them? And then if people steal them and break in. So, and how do you track it all? Um, so once I realized we could put it, make it a card store, uh, then I was like, Oh, well, this is great. You can actually, you know, change the pricing. Obviously you can make it, it doesn't have to be by the quarter. It can be 99 cents or whatever. And you can change the pricing time of day pricing, right? You can look and see what your, you know, high traffic, low traffic areas are and the low traffic, you can lower the price to try to get people in. So I thought, well, that's a really, that seems kind of unique to this business because I don't see that very much. It's mostly just, you know, it's what it is. And what, 98% or 95% are all coin, are still all coin stores. Yeah, huge think. percentage. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, okay, well, if I, that, if I can control that, um, maybe that can be my hook, my, you know, concept. So I thought, well, if I, you know, originally I thought I'll do time of day pricing. So every day there'd be times where the machines would just drop to half price like in the low traffic times, which we actually tried at the beginning. Um, so anyway, but I thought, okay, well, if it's, if it's going to drop to half price, why well, I just call it half price laundry, like, and let that be the, the concept. And um, because I thought, well, what are you going to laundry mat for? You want, I mean, why would you pick one? Obviously location, right. To be close to you. But beyond that, it's price and cleanliness, right? So you can either call it, you know, clean town laundry or whatever, or something to do with the affordability of it. I think, I think, um, to me anyway. So anyway, I thought who wouldn't want to go to a place called half laundry? Like, right. I mean, yeah, it, totally. It seems like, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's kind of where that came from. It came out of it being a card store and being able to control the pricing. And then we, um, we tried that time of day and it was just too complicated. I could, it was too complicated to market it to tell people like, okay, on Mondays, you know, it's going to be half price from 9 a.m. to 11.30. It just was, you know, it, it yeah. was too much. Um, so what we ended up doing was uh, having a half price Thursday. That was our lowest traffic day. And um, so every Thursday is half price Thursday. Um, and then uh, it, we have a... Uh, anyway, so... Um, and then we were also doing running half price specials during the month just on a set of machines would be always half price. Um, so, you know, we're trying to make sure we live up to the name. Um, but the ability to change that is so easy, you know, and change that pricing is so easy. So that's where it came from. Yeah, I love the the card system, just the flexibility you have to be able to do different things like that, promotional things um, that customers really love. Um, I'm curious, how how did it affect your traffic? On, like on Thursdays? That's our best day now. Is it? Better than Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes it, sense. Uh, it went from the worst day to the best day. Yeah. I mean, and it took, it took a while. It's really good. Both stores are on the same trajectory. You know, we're like six months into the new store and the, the revenue has been going up about 30%, you know, a month. And um, Thursdays are like the beginning, like, you know, handful of people, a little bit more, you know, once they knew, you know, you have to know it's there mm-hmm. and it's consistent. Um, now Thursdays are super busy at the new store, just like they're at the first store. Um, I mean, we, to the point where like, you know, <laughs> we were building these cabinets. I was telling you like to hold the washing fold stuff. And last week the guys were in there building the cabinets and it was Thursday. And my staff was like, you cannot let people do work on Thursday. We can't just visit, you know, we can't handle it. There's just too much going on. Yeah. So from now on, the mandate is no, you know, no work gets done on a Thursday. You know, it's only, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's been great. I mean, it, it seems to have really worked. Yeah. Thursday's a new Sunday over there. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it really gives you two big days because Sunday's still a huge day. Yeah. But now Thursday is a little bit better. So you get really, and then Saturday, obviously, but those, Thursday, Sunday for us. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Did, did you see a significant drop in any of the other days? No, that was the thing. I, you know, I wasn't sure if like, I was going to cut into business from other days, but it really didn't seem to do that at all. Um, it seemed to just raise Thursday and everything else pretty much stayed the same. I mean, if anything, I think it probably helped increase business overall just because it's more awareness and people, and, you know, it was so busy that if you came on Thursday and you couldn't get in or, you know, you had to wait, you, you know, you found the store right, and you come back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I love that as, you know, from a marketing perspective, that's genius, man. Money, money talks. So when, you know, <laughs> that's what I and yeah. I was hoping. So I was hoping. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I love that. Um, the, uh, man, I had one more question I was going to ask you, but you know, I'm getting old over here. So I just, you, you gotta, I don't know how you do it. It's a tough job. You gotta listen. You gotta oh, you know, be prepared for the next question, but you gotta be in the moment, you know? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right. Well, maybe it'll come back to me in a little right. bit, but for right now, I would love to get down to business. Uh, let's get down to business. Over and out. Down to business. Just a little bit. And hear a little bit of like just the details of your business. I mean, we've talked about some of those already, yeah. but uh, a couple of little more details. Uh, number one, where, where, so you're in Sherman Oaks, right? So, so I live here. Laundromat's located. So, and yeah, for those, I mean, Sherman Oaks is, so there's LA is, there's the city and the valley. The city is Beverly Hills and, you know, all that, Santa Monica and the valley is the San Fernando Valley. Um, so Sherman Oaks is kind of near, whatever. I, the, the laundromats are in Panorama City and Arlita, which are like, kind of North, North Valley. Um, uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. So, uh, so you have two laundromats. Do you, you started talking about real estate. Do you have any investment real estate or no? I don't at this moment. Um, I, uh, there was a deal I'm looking at that would uh, would be buying the uh, the building and then putting laundromat in it. Nice. Which I'm really interested in doing that. Yeah, uh, to own the you know the building that I have the store in. Um, so I don't know that this particular deal is going to happen, but that I'm looking at that. So part of it was I felt like this business was a way to get cash flow. I know you talked about that. You know, the cash flow of this business is much higher than it is in real estate typically. Mm-hmm. Um, so my idea was let me get some, let me get cash flow going, and then I'll take the cash flow and start investing in real estate. Um, but I didn't want to do it in the reverse because yeah, and then I don't have any cash flow to invest in anything else, you know, for a while. Yeah. So. It is, I, I mean, I love, I say this all the time, but I love the relationship between real estate and laundromats for that reason, really. And it's kind of funny because it's a little bit backwards from the normal model. The normal model is create a bunch of equity or save a bunch of money or whatever. And then with that, go buy cash flow essentially with it. And I, but I love kind of flipping that um, because if you can get that cash flow and you take away, you know, just those, the basic pressure and the basic needs that you have for just, you know, daily cash flow, then you can really focus on doing more and, and doing bigger stuff. So I like that. Was, yeah. That was really appealing to me to, to sort of have enough money flowing in that I, I wouldn't be as concerned about, you know, just living in the basics and then you really can zoom out and start to save. And then, then when you're, you know, and also with this business, I mean, the, the idea of the wash and fold and the pickup and delivery adding to it is such a, there's so much room to add revenue there that um, is kind of limitless. So, so with all that money that I hope to bring in as this thing grows, that's the leftover that after I pay for my expenses, then you start investing, you know, in, in other, other things. So I, I, that was exciting Totally. I love that. And I know too, you know, with laundromats, another huge perk of it. And we, you know, you kind of, we talked about this a little bit too, but it, it does help you free up that time when you have that cash flow, helps you free up that time. And as like a parent, you get more time with the kids and, you know, we all know that time's super limited. That time goes by really fast and trying to make the most of it is, you know, optimal. And it's hard to do when you're, you know, you're working all the time which a lot of us have to do. 
I've been so interested in this whole, you know, fire movement, the, the financial yeah. let's retire early. I mean, yeah. Because, you know, this whole outdated concept of, oh, I'll work my whole life and then when I'm 89, I'm retired to go to me. Like, no, you know, who wants to do that? You know? And then you look back and like, oh, I missed all my time with my kids and my family because I was at the office, you know? So, uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's finding a way around that and uh, freeing up the time. And this business definitely seems to do that. I mean, the, the, there's, there's certainly an investment of time at the beginning and for, no, you know, the, the setup to get it going to open and then from open to getting the business really on its feet. There's a lot of investment of time in that, but once it's going, then you've got, it's going. And then I feel like years can, you know, it can just go on that way forever. So it's really an investment from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a pretty typical quote unquote passive income model, right? Where you invest a lot of time up front and then it, I mean, it's not going to run itself. It's still a business and you're still dealing with people. So there will be problems, but relatively speaking, especially relative to like a full-time job, you know, you're going to have a lot more time. It's a lot more okay. passive than that. Okay. If you want it to be. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you know, but you can also spend your time in a way that's more valuable. I mean, on the business, you know, if you're zoomed out and you're working on marketing and you're working on increasing pickup and delivery, you know, by major percentage points, I mean, that's, you know, that's well rewarded time spent, you know? Yeah. Huge, huge. Yeah. Big return on your investment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I think I remember you saying you got in the business in 2018. Is that right? Uh, yeah. 17 was like when it started and 18. Ago, yeah. You opened in the, okay. It's 2020 right now. In case you're listening to this in 2150 or something. <laughs> uh, I by that point, yeah. <laughs> if you're listening in 2015, man, the immortal podcast episode right here <laughs> going on forever. <laughs> uh, talk to me. Okay. So you got, I mean, you're the half price laundromat here. Talk to me a little bit, like give me ballparks of what event prices cost. I think people are always surprised, you know, in New York, LA, you know, how low prices can be compared to some of these like Midwest cities who are charging yeah. I don't know, like an arm and a leg, I feel like, but what yeah. are your prices looking like? Uh, both stores are very similar. I mean, they're in the same general area. They're only like 10 minutes apart. So it's, it's um, but they range from like two, the top loaders are like 225. Um, and then they go up to like the uh, 70 pounders are um, 750, 775. They're under $8. Okay. So between two and eight bucks. And then on half price days, it's one and four dollars. You know, yeah. it's a huge difference. I mean, if you think about doing a wash for four, a 70 pound machine for four bucks, you know, it's, it's a bargain. Good. Yeah. That is, that's why I'm going to come do my pickup and delivery at your laundromat <laughs> on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, okay. Are you fully attended, partially attended? What are you, what are you running well, right now? Yeah. So we're fully attended. Um, you know, that was one of the things too, at the beginning, I wasn't sure, you know, it's like the idea of like, Hey, how great would it be just to have automatic doors and nobody shows up and the run, you know, but the reality is it's gotta be clean and it's gotta, you gotta have customer service, especially I think these days as, uh, as I've heard a lot of your guests talking about, you know, the business is, you know, is, is, is evolving. And I think, you know, so anyway, they're both fully attended, um, uh, from, you know, open to close. And I just think that's key to have someone there to be friendly, to greet them when they come in. Hey, I'm here if you need me, you know, and, and cause there's always something, it's always, Oh, there's too much soap and the, the, the door got locked. I mean, there's, you know, a million little things that go on. I don't know how to, in the card system, like how do I, you know, use that. So having someone there is just really key. Yeah. So fully attended. What kind of hours are you guys? Uh, we're 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Those okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Pretty typical. And you're, are you card only or do you also accept coin? We're card only on both stores. Nice. I love that. I love that. Did you feel like there was any resistance from customers for doing card only? I think it, I think probably the beginning there was, I don't know how much resistance, but I think it was, it was different and I don't think they were used to it, you know? Yeah. Maybe that accounted for, a little bit extra time it took to get, to get rolling, you know, get people in there. Um, just cause that wasn't what they're used to doing. Um, but it seems like once they got, once they tried it, they really liked it. I mean, cause one of the stores, 
um, you know, we'll do a 10% bonus. So if you put in 10 bucks, you get $11. I mean, you just get a free dollar every, right? So, I mean, that's pretty good in itself. Um, and, uh, you know, the idea that they can uh, keep the card and, and, and also bonus points that, you know, they automatically accrue and then you get free washes. So um, it's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah, huge benefits to the yeah. card system. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Was it was it super expensive to put in? Um, it, I mean, you know, it's yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, I mean, the original store, you know, it was part of the equipment order, right? I mean, so yeah, it was. Uh, uh, let's see, another like an additional ten percent to the total cost okay. of the equipment, and then the new store already had it. So. Okay. Yeah. The, the reason I asked, I get asked that question all the time. Do you feel like the, the investment was worth it though? I do because, uh, I mean, I don't know how you keep track of it otherwise. I mean, everything's on the, you know, I can go online in one second, see exactly how everything's doing. Um, day to day, the store, I can pull up a report in two seconds. It shows me the month, the year. I mean, I, you know, it really helps me. Otherwise you're just always behind I'm always, I guess, counting. I don't know. It, it seems, uh, challenging. Yeah. Definitely. Also, you know, where it, it allows us to, um, you know, we take credit cards or take, um, debit cards. So that money goes straight into our bank account, you know? So it's still mostly cash and 75% cash, but that 25% is like a million in your bank. You know, so that helps. Um, yeah. Just cover bills and stuff. Yeah. Super nice. I, I mean, I think card systems. Awesome. I highly recommend it. Highly. Yeah. And I'm jealous. Because I don't have cards yet. You don't have yours? You don't have it? No. Oh, gosh, no. How is it? Coins and all that. I mean, is it, is it, how is it counting them and all that? Is it challenging or is it? No, I mean, it's not challenging. I, I use a scale and I weigh them. Right. It's a counter scale. So it tells me how many quarters there are. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty quick and easy, but, you know, it's still a hassle. I got to go in, the coin boxes get full or the changer's empty or, you know, a bill gets jammed and it shuts down one of the changer. I don't, you know, there's always like stuff like that. So and you can track of it in terms of your numbers. I mean, so I, I just created a semi elaborate spreadsheet that keeps track of stuff. In fact, you can download it. If you have a coin store and you have a headache, just like I did, you can download it at laundromatresource.com. Check out, I believe you got to sign up for the free membership and get the, go to the member resources, but you can download that spreadsheet for free right there. Look at that. Good little wow. plug there. That's nice. I think I'm going to check it out. I'm always looking for a spreadsheet. You don't need it, but well, you, maybe got, you got the data that you need. That's awesome. Um, all right. One more question and down to business. How, like, give me a ballpark. How many hours are you spending on these two laundromats a week? Um, so, you know, in the beginning, um, uh, I, I, you know, getting it going and, and putting in the time to get it started the first number of months uh, is very different than the later months. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I, but even then I feel like I'd, I'd spend, you know, maybe, maybe two hours a day, you know, you know, um, maybe, maybe two or three hours a day, five days a week or something at the very beginning, getting it, really up and running. Um, and then it just starts to diminish, you know, then it starts to be like, you know, an hour a day, there'd be like, you know, a phone call to deal with or something, or it's really, it's really the time that I'm the expansion stuff, like the, 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 the pick up delivery and, and new things and website stuff. That's really where I've been spending the time, but I don't know, yeah, two hours a day, I guess, you know, at the most, some days, one hour, some days, none. But never, and you know, like we'll have, we've been having staff meetings, so you know, I go in. That's a couple hours, you know. Um, but it's not a full time job at all. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, that's awesome. I I think it's just helpful for people to get an idea of how much time owners are spending, you know, at their stores and working on it. You know, a lot of people come into it with like, "Hey, I'm here once a week. I collect quarters," or take the bills out of the card, you know, the changer or the, uh, the card loader and roll out, you know, right, but right. there's a little bit more to it than that. But it, like you said, it's not significant, you know, after you get things going and, and rolling, it's, a, yeah, you certainly can sit back and just, you know, do the books and, 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 and keep it really simple. But 
I also think it, you know, that it stagnates and, and you know, I, I'm interested in growing it. So, and I enjoy that part of it. So that's been fun for me to spend time doing it. Awesome. All right. Well, we got another section we like to call the secret sauce. Listen up. It's the secret sauce. The secret sauce is, you know, what's one thing that you feel like is really working for your business right now that other owners can implement to help them improve their business? Um, I mean, we guess we're talking about, it, but I think like really it's staff, you know, um, having the right people. Uh, there is just so key. It's key to getting good reviews. The reviews on Yelp are key to getting business. The you know the the, the Google pages, um, the reviews on, are so key. So, um, and I feel like so many of the reviews are based on customer service. So, to me, getting the right people in there, and if someone's not right, you know, it's hard to fire someone. But just you got to move forward and, and try to find that right person and that right team. You know, as I said earlier, um, and then. Um, the right cast. And then I think the second, huh? The right cast. You got to get the right, the right cast. cast. You got to get the right cast. Yeah. It's an ensemble, you know. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's <laughs> it's not a it's not a, not a one hander. Um, and uh, and then I think the second thing is really this this wash and fold and delivery business. I think if you if you've got your self service thing kind of rolling, I mean it's it just makes sense. You've already got the investment. Um, you, you may as well maximize it. And there's so many now ways with technology to uh to do that and, and it just it, as opposed to buying another store just invest a little bit you know spending a lot to how to do a home store spend a little bit to invest in the store you already got and expand that into those services I, I, to me to me that makes the most sense at this point yeah i think both of those are awesome secret sauces i found with reviews most of my good reviews are because of really good staff. Most of my bad reviews are because, you know, something was dirty or a machine was busted, right? So having a good staff there that's going to encourage those good reviews and also keep things clean to discourage the bad reviews and let you know when you need to be working on these machines if they go down. Uh, man, having a great staff is... It's money in your pocket. It's key, really key. Yeah. 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 And I think you're right about the, the delivery business, the pickup and delivery. You know, you have the you have the stuff. If you can if you can figure out a way to get it going, you know, even if you're just doing it yourself, yeah. you know, before and after work or whatever, like get it going. I mean, it just seems to me like even if I'm doing, you know, a deliver one a day, that's just for I'm still bringing in that's just business that wouldn't be there. It's at a premium because it's the you know washing full prices. Got the machines. I've got someone to do it. You know, it just makes sense. Totally. Yeah, I love that, and makes it just makes a lot of sense. So cool. Next section is called pro tips. Pro tips. And pro tips is for the newbie, the the person who doesn't own a laundromat yet, but maybe is looking to buy their first one. You got any advice for them? I guess you know we were talking about this a little bit before, but I think you know. In general, the advice is take the leap, you know, at some point, make, you know, pull the trigger, um, but not without doing, you know, all your research. I, mm-hmm. I, I think you got to look at a bunch of them and you got to look at your area and you got to do, you got to do your homework so you know what to expect, you know, and, um, and then lower your expectations and just hope, you know, before you get into one, make sure that it doesn't take your absolute highest projection for you to, to break even. Like you want to, Make sure that even if you do okay, not, you know, half your projection will still be okay. Um, so, uh, you know, be pragmatic and, and, and be, um, and, and do your research. But once you sort of in that zone where you're like, okay, it looks good, but I don't know, then that's your fear. And then I think you got to just jump in and actually, you actually got to do it. And then just know that you can make it work. You know, if, if, it, if you need to put in more time to make it work, you can. And you will. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome pro tip because I mean, like we talked about taking that leap is it's hard to do. Uh, but you know, you're never going to get somewhere unless you take that first step, right? You're going to be where you're at forever. If, unless you take that first step. So you got to take that leap at some point. Yeah. There's really the analysis paralysis, paralysis, you know, you you know, so you want to analyze and do it and then 
but the, you, you can feel it. I think and you get to that point where you keep looking over the same numbers and the same spreadsheet and then you're adjusting it by $1 here and $2 there. That's mm-hmm. the point at which you're paralyzed, you know, then you go, all right, I got to do it. Yeah. I spent my fair share of time doing that early. On. Oh, I, I spent a lot of time. Yeah. Doing I love spreadsheets, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know, you, you know, you gotta do it. Yeah. I've got, I've got all kinds of spreadsheets I created that show me how I'm going to be like a multi, multi-millionaire. Yes. I love those spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I just do this, this, and this, yeah, it's going to be this. If I just get this return and I yeah. can say invest this much money every month. Hey, right. If you're interested in those spreadsheets, hit me up. I'll, I'll send them <laughs> over and show you how you too can have $30 million in the next 20 years. Opportunity. Right? Yeah. With laundromats. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, Awesome pro tip. We are laundromat resource. So I would love to ask, do you have any resources that you would recommend to help people improve themselves or their business? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think books are, are the way to go and you've got a great list of books on your uh, site. Um, I would, I would just go to that, go to your list and, uh, and, and read them all. Uh, the one that really for me was, was a game changer was rich dad, poor dad, it's, you know, I mean, it's not a, bestseller for a million years for no reason. It's just, it was an eye-opening book that made me understand, oh, this is how rich people get rich and wealthier. And this is why I'm not, it's not happening because I'm, it's, you have to do certain things. Um, and I would start with that if you haven't read that book. Um, it's really great, just financial 101, I think. And then you can go, you know, advance up. But I think books, I think you just, you get all those the great books that are on your site get into them and read them. Yeah. Awesome advice. And I, you know, I really couldn't agree more with the rich dad, poor dad, definitely a life changer for me. Also, uh, some people love it. Some people hate it, but man, I, you know, on this podcast and on a lot of the other entrepreneur and real estate investor podcasts that I listen to, when this question gets asked, rich dad, poor dad is by far the most answered question that I have seen. And so that just tells me something, get in there and, and learn something from it. So yeah, just read it. it's an easy read. It's fun. And yeah. it's, you learn a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's narrative. It's, it's awesome. Um, I wanted to sneak in, uh, another question and cause you had mentioned earlier the fire movement, which oh, is I got, a, I got about 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned earlier about the FIRE movement, the financial independence, retire early for those who aren't familiar with it. I'm wondering if you have any resources for that uh, to point people to, maybe to introduce them if they don't know anything about it. There are, I read a couple of books and I don't, if you just Google FIRE, you know, um, I can't recommend a particular book, but there were two or three that popped up, you know, F-I-R-E. Um, uh-huh. I, whatever I read, the, the, first couple that I saw were enough to give you the idea of it. Um, so I would just, you know, Google that and find a couple of those, of those books. Uh, maybe one's called, I don't know, you just Google it and you'll see them. Um, but I thought they were great because it kind of gives you um, a new strategy, new philosophy, instead of, you know, waiting for years and years to hopefully retire with something, you know, you really start now and you really start building it today and have the life you want as, as soon as you can, you know, why wait? Yeah, I love that philosophy. And I think one good place that I've seen to get an introduction of it is um, if you Google Mr. Money Mustache. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, got a, he's got a blog on it. There's a, there's a couple other really good blogs and there's some other podcasts. I'll link that one um, in case you want to kind of go get a little intro. For That's a good one because he's got every, you can, from there you can go to you know, all kinds of links. Yeah, he... He wrote a blog post that I think that put him on the map a while back. That's basically like the simple math of retiring early or something like that. And it basically tells you, Hey, if you're this old and you want to retire in this many years, here's how much you have to save every month. Right. And it really just breaks it down and makes it really simple. Right. And that, you know, the idea of taking control of your financial situation is, is, you know, it's so key because we just spend, we spend on stuff and it's gone. And we're like, Oh, I don't, I don't have enough to, I think we all say, well, I don't have enough to do that. I don't have enough to buy an apartment. Why don't I have enough to buy a laundromat? You know, but the truth is, is that, you know, you can start small, you can save, start saving small, um, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and build it up and then start small with the investment you have. 
Um, but it's, it's all about starting and saving and getting that habit going, you know, and then it, you, and then suddenly you're building, you know, oh, I got 500 bucks built up a thousand bucks, you know, now I can start to do things, you know? Yeah. Love that. And I mean, it goes right back to your pro tip. So, you know, get started, get started with something. Jump in there. Well, Hank, man, this has been awesome. I am, I, I really appreciate you coming on. You've been sharing a ton of awesome information. I think it's going to help a lot of people inspire a lot of owners and soon to be owners uh, in how to improve their businesses and how to get into the business. Really, really appreciate you coming on. I have one more question for you. If, if there are people out there that were inspired by you and they want to connect with you, maybe ask you some questions about you know, how you got into the business a little more or, uh, or how you're running your business, what's the best way they can connect with you? Uh, you call my people and I'll, I'll have my people, you know, call your people. Got it. <laughs> um, no, uh, the, um, no, emails is great. It's great. Just okay. email me and, uh, I'd love to hear from people and talk to people and expand my network and, and, and meet some folks. So I'm, I'm very open. I love to collaborate. I love to share and hear stuff. So awesome. What's your email address? It's, uh, uh, it's Hank at halfpricelaundry.com. Awesome. So H-A-N-K at halfpricelaundry. Yeah. And I'll put that in the show notes in the description. Uh, if you're on the podcast or on YouTube, Hank, man, this has been incredible. I really, again, I really appreciate you coming on. It's so good to actually finally connect with you, uh, you know, face to face, uh, well, sort of. You know, the way we connect face to face these days. Um, and really, really yeah, looking forward to connecting in person someday soon since we're so close. I know, I know. Me too. Well, thank you, Jordan. I really appreciate you having me on and, and keep doing what you're doing because it's uh, it is a great resource. You've named it correctly. It is a, a great resource <laughs> for all things laundry so. uh, <laughs> I agree. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that a lot, and we will talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. That was awesome. Hank, man. So good. So good. Thank you for coming on and sharing so much wisdom. As promised for me, the big takeaway for me was actually a mindset takeaway. I loved, he said this quote, he said, I'm not going to fail because I'm going to make it work. And I love that mindset. And I just want to ingrain, I want to like brainwash myself with that quote. I'm going to make it work. So I refuse to fail. And I, I just, in everything I do, that's the mindset I want to have because adversity will come, bumps in the road will come, and it will be difficult to navigate those. But if you can just decide and bet on yourself and say, I will make it work, man, I think the sky's the limit for you. So that was my takeaway, but I encourage you as always, every single week, take one thing away from this uh, interview with Hank today and apply it to your life and or to your business and watch as you do that every week, how big your business is gonna grow. It's, ah man, it's gonna be awesome. We're all gonna get better and do it together. So make sure you head over to the forums and get better together over there. And as always, if you're interested in being on the podcast, check out laundromatresource.com slash podcast guest. Again, link for that and everything else from the episode in the description or the show notes. And man, I, I, will, I can't wait to see you guys next week. You're gonna be blown away by next week's episode. You're gonna love it. All right, we'll see you. Peace.